I will give a short sermon now. And I won't be speaking about Rosh Hashanah. We speak about it a lot. And we celebrate Rosh Hashanah, actually, and that's great. And of course, what I'll be saying will be in, in context with that. But I want to speak about Yeshua more now. Because what we celebrate here today only makes sense or has its sense in Him. And without Him, all of this celebrating wouldn't make sense. Just as in all the world's synagogues. There wouldn't be celebrating Rosh Hashanah if there were no Yeshua, Yeshua, the Messiah. Maybe this isn't seen at the synagogues, but he is there. And he hasn't left his people Israel. And in every one of the world's synagogues where Jews come together, he is there. Because he came from his people or for his people also, and he will never leave them. Just as much as he doesn't leave uh, all the believers in him. A special, um, of course, it's different here, very different, but I want to underline this. If Yeshua wasn't present in the synagogues of Berlin, Frankfurt, <laughs> New York, Tel Aviv, uh, and whatever city today, if he wasn't there, the Jews weren't able to celebrate anything today because we wouldn't even exist. Yeshua is uh, the keeper of Israel the protector and we know although Yeshua is present in all of Berlin synagogues now we know that he is mostly not seen in these synagogues because he is hidden um, yes he's hidden And the time will come where the eyes of the Jewish people will be opened and they will recognize him. And just as the prophets say in the Tanakh, when the eyes are opened, wow, that's the one we should have been seeing all the time over. When I, our eyes were opened for Yeshua, We looked at our life back into the past. And we saw that he had been there. He had already been there when we didn't believe in him. He was close to us even when we didn't know anything about him. He didn't even leave us when we didn't want to know about him at all. And Yeshua is with the Jews today on this special day. And that's the reason why Jews everywhere in the world are able to celebrate this fest. And so we can say, or well, somebody might say, well, that's all uh, nonsense. There's no Yeshua, and we've been celebrating this like this all the time, and we'll continue doing so. There will come a time where you will see why we celebrate all of this, and thanks to whom. 
So the time will come um, where people will see Yeshua. When Yeshua came to the people of Israel, people loved listening to his teaching. They um, probably saw him as a great teacher. There are many rabbis today who say uh, Yeshua, Jesus lived and he existed. He uh, taught the Torah. Many Orthodox Jews and scientists exactly say that. And many Messianic believers say that too. But that's not the whole truth. It's just part of the truth that he was a great teacher and that he gave the Torah. That was just, a, so to speak, like a side effect of who he really is. And I would like to give an example um, to this from the Gospels. And I want to share one thought that really shake, shook me. Um, there are some people who say the Gospels are um, a collection of Yeshua's teachings. And it's, so to speak, something where we draw a conclusion from this, something that we can learn from it. But also, this is only a small part of what it actually really is. The Gospels don't teach us Yeshua's teachings in the first place. They teach us who Yeshua is in the first place. The Gospels don't reveal to us what we are to do in the first place, but they uh, reveal us who Yeshua is. They show us his nature, his being. And we'll turn to Luke chapter 5. Please open your Bibles if you have the Bible with you. If you don't have one, you can uh, borrow one here. If you're watching online, feel welcome to open your Bibles as a book or online on your phone and follow along what we'll be reading at least so that you don't fall asleep <laughs> I'll be reading something from the beginning in a moment Uh, verses 1 and 2, Luke 5. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And then verse 3 unto part of 4. And 
and he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, so the crowd was pressing onto him. And probably they could have um, thrown him into the water. <laughs> it got so so close and everybody wanted to have his teaching. And he saw the boat, saw the boat. And he asked if he could get in and just get a bit away from the land so that the people could hear him more easily. He is a great teacher. And when he taught, um, the people were pleased. And he, know, he knew how to teach well. And he taught with might and power not like the Pharisees and the scribes, not like the pastors or messianic rabbis, not like me. He taught like just the Messiah could do, somebody who had the might, and the people wanted to hear him. I never had to get onto a boat or a ship in order to preach. But Yeshua had the situation happen um, many times. <laughs> he was really a great teacher, a great rabbi, and a great preacher. But that wasn't everything yet. Next thing that's happening here. I'll, I'll just tell you in my words. He speaks to Simon Peter. Let's throw the net into the water. Do you want fish? Then throw the net out. And Peter says, we've been trying to catch something all night and it didn't work. And because Yeshua said all these things and he was teaching, he probably had uh, such a convincing power in him also. And he said, because you say that we should throw out the net. Well, he did so. And he wasn't able to draw it back out of the water because there were so many fish in there. And he had to call the others to help him draw the net out of the water again. There was such a huge amount of fish. so that the ship began to sink because of the weight. Two ships or two boats started to, to sink. And then in verse 8, But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Peter understood something. When Isaiah stood before the Lord in chapter 6 of Isaiah, he saw the Lord and he was afraid. Because he understood that he was a sinner and that he actually had to, should have to die now. And what Peter says here, it's 
shows that he realizes there's not only a teacher in front of him. In his boat, the Lord himself is there and he saw God. And he understands that he is a sinner. And the first thing he can think of is, Yeshua, you need to go. I want you to leave because he was so afraid. In verse 9, it says, amazement had seized him. And also uh, the others, James and John. And Yeshua said to Simon in verse 10, do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. Peter, you are a sinner as you said rightly but don't be afraid because Yeshua said I didn't come so that you should be afraid or die and all of them ate well together after this and in verse 12 we read Verse 12, while he was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 13, and he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. Yeshua was able to do that just by one touch of his hand. That which no person could do, no saint or priest, and no righteous one. Yeshua just needed to want it, and he wanted to. And it happened. Tell me, is that only a teacher we see here? Somebody who knows the Torah? A good preacher? We see somebody who was like God. This shows us somebody who can do miracles that only God can do. Verse 15. But the news about him was spreading even farther, and large crowds were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. Says. Afterwards, it says that he was teaching many scribes and Pharisees and rabbis came to him um, and they wanted to learn the spiritual need of that time. They wanted to learn and they came to him. And in verse 17, in the end of that verse, it says, And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And then they bring um, a lame person, a paralyzed person. And they and his friends wanted uh, that person to be healed. So they took the roof of the house apart and um, yes, brought him down into the house this way. In, just in front of Yeshua and in verse 20 it says Yeshua seeing their faith he said friend your sins are forgiven 
there's a paralyzed person. <laughs> Which sense could he have committed? Only God knew. But Yeshua said, your sins are forgiven. And there are those intelligent and um, educated people around there, the teachers of Israel, and they go like, what? <laughs> What's happening? How dare you? Verse 21 says, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? A man, nobody. No one can forgive sins apart from God. Do you think Yeshua didn't know that? Of course he knew. Verse 22. But Yeshua, aware of their reasonings, answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Listen, Yeshua didn't only hear that. He knew what they were thinking in their hearts. And if I think about that, If I think about the fact that he knows what I think, what is in my heart, I feel like Peter, go away, go away, because I'm a sinful man. And I hope you think like this as well. And I want to warn you, he knows what you're thinking. He knows what's inside your heart. He knows everything. But um, it's it might be frightening, but it's even more so. It's good. Let's look at verse 23. Which is easier to say, your sins have been forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk? Twenty-four, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, "I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home." Who can forgive sins but God alone? Who? Nobody. And I want to read again what we've just been reading. The Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Listen. Do you see who is standing here for us? Who is standing in front of us? Do we even understand who he is? We are in this repentance, bringing our sins to God. That's um, the meaning of Rosh Hashanah. That's the meaning of the ten following days until Yom Kippur. Who is mighty to forgive all our sins? Who has the mind on earth? Yeshua. This um, authority has been given to Yeshua. Hmm. Neither Rosh Hashanah nor Yom Kippur would be possible without Yeshua. There wouldn't be any forgiveness of sins or um, um, exhaustment of repentance.
And I want to underline what is written here again. Yeshua has the authority to forgive sins on earth. So, better than anything else is if you go straight to him. And we know that this paralytic got up immediately and he walked home. In verse 26, we read, They were all struck with astonishment and began glorifying God, and they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen remarkable things today. And Yeshua left this house afterwards. And he met um, a tax collector. Those are good people today, but back then they were the bad people. <laughs> and he saw him. And um, came to his house um, because he was invited to eat. And the table was well set. And all of Levi's friends were there of this tax collector. Also tax collectors. His friends. And there were many sinners there. And he was lying there with them, and they all ate together. And there was a saying at that time. Tell me in whose company you're eating, and I will tell you who you are. <laughs> because the people in whose company you eat, that determines you. And there were scribes who saw this. And they spoke to Yeshua's disciples in verse 30. Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? They spoke to the um, disciples and they were like, hmm. All right, why are we doing this actually? We are different, aren't we? And Yeshua is different. And the disciples didn't know what to answer. So in verse 31 we read, And Yeshua answered and said to them, Yeshua had to answer. It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. And 32. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that's where we come back to Rosh Hashanah. Yeshua came. He has come so that we can eat with him. Not so that we determine who he is, but that we can be determined by him. By him. Tell me who, in whose company you're eating and I'll tell you who you are. Um, and I'm determined by him. That's what he came for. That's what he suffered for. That's what he died for and resurrected for. He rose again. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. And that's why he will come back. 
If you are a sinner, Yeshua came for you. If you are doing bad, if you aren't well, He came for you. And if you have problems, He is here. If you are sick, He is here. And if something is difficult for you, He came just for you. He didn't come to those that are successful, although they need Him too. And He loves them too. But today He came for you. That's why we can celebrate Rosh Hashanah. That's why we can pray. He has the authority to forgive sins. And He came just to do that. He came to bring us peace. He came to help us. Today, I am sick. Today, I am the sinner. That's why He came to me. You are sick today. You aren't doing well. You are the sinner today. And He came just for you. And if I think about that, I like celebrating Rosh Hashanah. And I'm rejoiced because Yeshua is everywhere in the synagogues with the Jews. He came for everyone. He came for you and for me. And that's why I say, forgive me. I have sinned. Forgive us because we have sinned. I want a good new year. I want a better new year than the one that's just passed. But with him, I'm doing good. With him, I'm in good hands. He's not just a teacher. He's not just a rabbi. He's more than that. He is God come in the flesh. He is my Mashiach. He's my Redeemer. Glory be to God. Amen.